Games are better when you can play them together. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 co-op games you should be playing in 2018. Number 10 is Kirby Star Allies. Now, recently I did say that this isn't the best Kirby game. That doesn't mean it isn't a great game. The issue for me is that it doesn't introduce a whole heck of a lot of new stuff, and it feels a little bit easy. But the thing is, as a co-op game, it is actually a ton of fun. In fact, that's when Kirby Star Allies shines, when you've got a star ally. Frankly, as a platformer, it's what you would expect from Kirby. The levels are well designed. It's more than pleasant and fun and light, but engaging. It's a gorgeous game with a great soundtrack, the kind of platformer you want to play with somebody else, and it's probably a lot better as a co-op platformer in all honesty than it is as a single player. Kirby Star Allies is obviously already out. It's out on the Switch and you can pick it up anytime you want. Number nine is Divinity Original Sin 2. In every way, one of the better turn-based combat games as a single player, but as a co-op, it is even better. Being able to collaborate on different characters, their different roles, the different parties, is involved using their skill crafting system as well as collaborative planning of battle tactics it is really just a joy to play like i said a hugely enjoyable single player game when you bring in friends it just becomes this full-on involved collaborative experience that just feels like you're taking part in something like viscerally satisfying divinity original sin 2 is out on microsoft windows as of last year but here's the kicker for the real party type oriented co-op you're gonna want to wait until august 2018 when it comes to home consoles in the form of a ps4 and xbox one release number eight is deep rock galactic which is a game that in every way deserves to be on this list deep rock galactic is somewhere between no man's sky and left for dead with a bit of minecraft in there coincidentally there's a bit of a no man's sky vibe because of the art style and the fact that there is resource management but the game plays so much more more like, in my opinion, a Left 4 Dead in a sort of procedurally generated space environment. And it is every bit as fun as Left 4 Dead, a totally different scenario with more to do, in all honesty, with the resource management stuff. It is, in my opinion, literally one of the perfect co-op titles, period. If you're into shooters, it's in early access now. You can find it on Steam and Xbox One. If you buy it on Xbox One to play anywhere title, if you buy it on Steam, it's not. It is a game that is in ongoing development so keep that in mind but it really is already a fantastic game number seven is crackdown 3 a game that we've talked about a lot a lot in fact it's almost to the point where i'm fatigued about talking about this game i've wanted to play it for a long long time this is a game that is going to offer you various different modes one of them being co-op as you have to kill various bosses and kingpins of different organizations that hold power in the city of new providence and that means destroying lots of buildings it's cool but this game actually considers the idea of destabilizing infrastructure as how you can win because they've created an elaborate system to let you destroy buildings and that's kind of the thing that has me interested in it the thing that has me fatigued about it is that we've been told every single year that this game was going to come out for an extremely long period of time and although we have been given q2 q3 2018 we do not have a hard date and the thing that we are expected to have is simply hope which I do have, because I really want to play it, and I will be looking out for it later in 2018 with some very cautious optimism. Number six is State of Decay 2, a game that really, it depends on your perspective. I'm personally somebody who enjoys State of Decay, and I particularly like the idea of bringing community elements into that. In fact, that's basically the reason it is a co-op game. They've brought a whole community layer to the game itself. And our very own Jake Baldino has a fairly contrasting opinion with that i certainly recommend that you listen to what he has to say about it especially if you haven't played the first state of decay he's done a pretty good job identifying exactly who the game is for and i think that's probably the most important thing in relation to whether you'll like it but being able to play it together if you've got friends that like it i'm quite sure that the game is going to be very good i'm excited for it personally i liked the original and i can't wait to see more state of decay comes out tomorrow i'm looking forward to it i don't know i like the series
Number five is Sea of Thieves, again, a game that's kind of for a very specific kind of person. Sea of Thieves is all about letting the player play with other players and create a narrative. That's truly the reason you would want to play this game. If you play this game alone, you feel it. There is a sort of loneliness cloud hanging over you when you play it alone, but when you play it with friends, it suddenly springs to life as a very social experience that gives you a lot of freedom to goof around, have fun, and really just kind of enjoy the concept of being a free pirate out on the sea with a couple of other people that you can have fun with sitting on the couch, so why not being a pirate? It's not a perfect game. Again, its open-endedness is both its strength and its weakness, and again, it's for a very specific kind of person. It's out. You can play it on Microsoft Windows and Xbox One at any time. Number four is Far Cry 5, which is a game that, in all honesty, probably could be called among the best of the series, if not the best. It certainly gives the better titles out of the past a run for its money, and as a co-op game, it shines quite well because, well, Far Cry is pretty much a good game as far as co-op goes. Five certainly brings you into an interesting world, sort of an alternate reality with a cult that feels very much now. But you have to remember that this layers in a lot of the Ubisoft conventions, and there's a striking air of familiarity with a lot of it. That's not necessarily bad, but despite the fact that this game is actually probably among the best, it also feels very samey at times. Still, with friends, it is really enjoyable. It's out on Windows, PS4, and Xbox One, so if you're a fan of Far Cry, give it a shot. Number three is War. Warhammer Vermintide 2, a pretty wild first-person, very melee-based first-person combat game that almost doesn't need a description as to why it is a good co-op game. When looking at the action from this game, it is blistering, it's high impact, it flows incredibly well. The game definitely leans toward melee combat, but all of its various projectiles are interesting. It throws quite a variety of weapons and tools at you in order to complete the objectives at hand. And because of that sort of mix and match element of the game, having several friends playing at once just meshes in such a fun, weirdly arcadey kind of way, despite it not really being a terribly arcadey game. Warhammer Vermintide 2 is out on PC now and will be out on PS4 and Xbox One later in the year. Number two is a way out a game that beat all of the sales expectations EA had for it because it is quite interesting. Now it is in every way a very traditional adventure game with a few small action elements from time to time, but the real shining element here is that the co-op stretches the game far beyond a typical adventure experience. Quite often the second player is very necessary, the characters carrying out something that can't be done without two people, a distraction, a obstacle being moved, things like that, that really sort of build on the concept of the game, which is an escape. Pretty much the whole time you feel very much as though you are on the lamp, and while playing along with the second player, it seems surprisingly easy to slip into the roles of the two characters. A way out's already out. You can play it on Xbox One, PS4, and Microsoft Windows anytime you like, and it is a damn good game. And finally, number one is Monster Hunter World, a game that feels very much like it was intended to mainstream Monster Hunter without removing the things that make Monster Hunter great. It certainly simplifies some elements of it and expands on others. For instance, zones are no longer a thing, it's just a big open world. And for a game like Monster Hunter, that works more than good. If you're unfamiliar, you create a character, head to a new continent filled with monsters, fight monsters, get loot, craft weapons that allow you to face more powerful monsters, which allow you to craft better equipment, which allow you to fight more powerful monsters, and so on and so forth. I'm being a little bit reductivist, because truly the game is a ton of fun with tons of variety and various different elements of the game, and forming a team going after monsters and creating all of your own weapons and collaborating on strategy is obviously very fun. Monster Hunter World is already out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and it will be coming to Microsoft Windows later in the year. What's your favorite co-op game that is already out or coming this year? Leave us a comment. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed now, it would of course be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I am Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.